Hi, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and here I have the Motorola Milestone or the Droid as it's known as in the USA. We're just going to do a quick tour of the handset for you because we have already done a, an unbox previously um, but just as a quick refresh front facing 3.7 inch uh, diagonal display 480 by 800 pixels capacitive touch screen and buttons underneath which are also touch sensitive they do illuminate when um, touched the buttons at the bottom uh, although not particularly brightly um, there's this little step at the bottom which I have found to be kind of irritating it seems to me that uh, it's almost like uh, a mistake where the top sliding screen doesn't quite um, fit um, the bottom portion properly uh, as you can see there that slides the sliding part is a little bit smaller than the bottom part um, don't know why they've done that I'm trying to think of different reasons why that might be um, haven't really come up with a good explanation of why they might have done that uh, left hand side uh, we have the micro USB sync charge cable nothing really to speak of on the bottom uh, there is a dedicated camera button on the right hand side and up and down volume control then a 3.5mm headphone connector which uh, we can use a wired headset that's supplied and also the power button and the lock button on the top which just, just wakes up and uh, puts the um, handset into like a sleep mode. On the back we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera which does have dual LEDs and on the back obviously we have the cover over the battery compartment, SIM card goes in here and the micro SD card it goes there. That's an 8 gig micro SD HC memory card that is supplied in the package, which is quite cool. Uh, back cover then just slides on, as I say, metal back cover, and it's quite secure, quite sturdy. Um, so let's have a look at the OS in a bit more detail then, and uh, we'll just unlock. So we turn on, and I actually have to swipe across to unlock and unlocks display. So you have the main screen here. We have messaging, market, phone, contacts, browser and maps. I don't have any contacts at the moment, we'll just pop into the phone dialer. It does bring up the um, obviously the keypad. We have a call cool log, contacts and favourites and an extremely touch sensitive display. Because it is capacitive, requires a very little touch in order for that to actually operate. And um, that works quite nicely. Uh, I can clear those, I can go to the call cool log. Obviously I haven't made any calls at the moment and I don't have any contacts and I haven't set up any favourites as yet but uh, that's the phone dialer, that's pretty straightforward and we can go back home and go into messaging and we can compose a new text message uh, we can set two but we can tap down here to compose now in the portrait mode it does bring up a nice touch screen keyboard uh, so a full QWERTY touch screen keyboard which works extremely well, I've been using it for um, you know, about 24 hours or so playing around with the handset and the touch screen works perfectly well, the keyboard's just fine pretty much the same as you're going to find on any other Android handset to be honest um, but it just works, it's uh, very similar to the one on the iPhone um, in terms of the way it works and it has you release the, your finger off the keyboard that uh, anything actually happens rather than when you push it down so if you do push your finger down in the wrong place you can just slide along and lift off uh, pretty standard but it is a fairly good and fairly accurate uh, tracking keyboard quite impressed with it so far but if I then slot, turn around and open up I can't use the touch screen keyboard but I mean what is the point because obviously we do have a full QWERTY keyboard uh, which is a physical one when you open up um, I guess some might um, be somewhat disappointed about being able to do that um, and maybe there are some apps out there will actually allow you to rotate the display um, without actually sliding out the keyboard and uh, you know perhaps that's a possibility perhaps that's something that you might like um, but that's not something that's standard or supported as standard come back out of that and we can go back home uh, we can go to our browser and it automatically will load up Google uh, then it renders perfectly okay and again I can rotate the display uh, and obviously that's put, that works just as you'd expect it to work to be honest with you no, no, uh, no thrills but no great shakes either and uh, I can go to another page so we'll go to our website obviously here and we'll just load that up uh, it doesn't load too, too, uh, too slowly I mean I'm working over Wi-Fi uh, and over a broadband connection um, and it's, yeah, it's not bad at all it's a little bit slower than um, a web browser on say a PC or a Mac would load um, but then you'd probably expect that because of the rendering time uh, and it's a fair amount to actually load on this page for example and it's just, backlight's just gone off 
uh, but then we can actually scroll around and that's fine we can click on a YouTube video we actually tap on that and it'll load the video and it won't take a few seconds as you can see there our video is loaded and it's started playing uh, although I have actually turned the volume completely down to so volume up and that plays perfectly well absolutely no problems with that it works at, um, really smoothly uh, and the quality is extremely good obviously as I say I am working over broadband so uh, over Wi-Fi you'd expect it to work quite well but uh, very impressive nonetheless and obviously I launched that straight from the browser so that is in itself pretty good and come back out of there and uh, we can go to the market so anyone that hasn't seen the Android market before uh, this is one thing I have noticed with the handset uh, a couple of times sometimes it'll get kind of confused as to which orientation it's supposed to be in so when you load up an application it might load uh, landscape when it should be portrait and vice versa uh, but it seems to sort itself out after a second or two but that was an example that you just saw there so yes Android market is very similar to say the App Store um, or the um, the Windows mobile version of uh, the marketplace um, very similar we have different categories apps games uh, and downloads so we can go into games for example arcade and action again for example uh, and we have a lot in here so we have um, a number of uh, paid applications or games but we can also look at the free ones and there are tons and tons of free applications and games um, all very um, some of them are very very good some of them are pretty you know rough to be honest with you but um, you know there are there is some good quality stuff out there even the free stuff isn't bad uh, and it's just simply a case of clicking on a game uh, and basically downloading it so let's uh, just pick one so let's pick um, say ping pong and we'll install that and OK that item will be downloaded and you'll just see in the top corner there it does show a little download um, icon there that's being animated while that's downloading and uh, that won't take a two. We can actually it says it's successfully installed, and we can go back out now to actually see that application, or in this case, a game that's installed. Uh, we simply open up the bit at the bottom and uh, scroll through, and we can see alphabetically ping pong light is there, and we can open that up, and it opens in balls mode. So, touch on the ball, double tap on the screen to release, and it's a pretty basic game. Um, you know, your simple bat and ball sort of tile game, but it isn't bad. Um, you know, it's certainly playable, and uh, there are plenty of other applications like that on on the marketplace. So, uh, definitely worth having a browse through. Uh, in terms of other applications, well, obviously we've seen the browser already. Calculator, well, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's pop into the camera. Not something that I've played around with very much, uh, but the camera opens up okay. It takes a while for it to actually adjust the white balance, as you can see there. Um, but if we actually just grab something we can just put in the way there you go, that's a, a small tripod there that we can put in the place and uh, in order to take the picture we can use the button on the top or we can use the button on the screen so if I just partially hold down the button it's a two stage thing on the button on the top so um, a half press if you like will actually turn on the LED uh, flash and uh, auto focus and then press again so the flash goes off and I've taken our picture uh, it's not perfect um, the picture isn't the most fantastic picture uh, I've ever seen and obviously the flash there seems to actually be a little bit cut off um, which is a little bit strange but uh, pitch quality isn't too terrible but when, I, when we come to do the full review uh, I make sure that we actually have a lot more sample footage rather than just uh, a rough picture there that we've just taken but we'll have some sample footage maybe some taken outside and everything else then we have uh, Google Maps so we can pop into there and obviously and we can scroll it around and then we can zoom into areas in the United Kingdom uh, and obviously I could at this point enable the GPS and it will pick up our actual location rather than um, me just actually scrolling around the map but that's pre-installed and uh, pretty standard it's uh, you know nothing out of the ordinary I can go into the menu um, I can set my location and within a second or two um, it will actually pick up my location possibly not because I'm indoors um, but uh, it, with, a, with a great deal of accuracy it will actually pick it up outside because we have a, do have a fairly decent GPS chipset built, with, built in so that's quite good so we'll pop out of there and go back home 
and uh, see the rest of the applications. Uh, obviously I have email, I already have Google Mail, so I've very quickly set up a Google Mail uh, or a Google account so I can go in and out of the Android market. So uh, I do have just like a simple account set up. And in setting up a market account, um, it does set up an email account for you automatically, uh, which is quite good. I don't have to set up Android Market and then set up a Google email account. It does it all for me, all in one go, so that's pretty cool. Um, and these are a couple of just like welcome emails that have uh, actually come through. Uh, and I can actually um, read or archive or delete any of these emails. Email is pretty straightforward on the device actually. And um, you know the screen, as you can see there, is, uh, is quite nice. And it's, uh, it renders the text nicely, uh, even where it's fairly small and pale grey, I can still per read that perfectly well, it's quite impressive. Again, let's pop back out of there and look at the rest of the apps. Well, we've already seen Maps and Market. We have a Media Gallery and Motorola Navigation. We can pop into Motonav, which comes pre-installed as standard, obviously. And the first time you use it, it will actually come up installing Motonav. Okay, and I'll accept the agreement. And it goes through configuration wizard. Uh, we'll just next through all of these. It's kind of like TomTom Tom when you first set that up. Um, it uh, will ask me for a starting point. Well, we're gonna say Paris for the sheer hell of it. And uh, we'll select anything for now just for the quickness. And it does load a turn-by-turn -turn map, uh, which is quite good. I can set a destination, and I can do find address, location, or place on map. Uh, say, as in terms of navigation, it's pretty straightforward and pretty standard. I'll have a look at that in a bit more detail when it comes to the actual review, when we can actually get out and use it properly as a proper navigation aid. So we'll actually just come out of there, and we want to exit the program. And finally, let's just have a last look through the applications. Uh, we've got music and the Motorola portal. We have the settings menu, voice search, YouTube we've already seen, and Google Talk, obviously. Uh, so let's just pop into music. And we can list by artist, album, song, and playlist. Uh, obviously, don't have anything pre-installed on here at the moment. Uh, but it is pretty standard and pretty straightforward in terms of what you would expect um, an MP3 player or um, you know MP3 playback on a handset to be. It's pretty ordinary and straightforward, so that's quite good. So back out to the home menu again. Um, finally, we can actually swipe different panes. So uh, we've got three different panels that we can use. So we can install um, different icons onto this panel here if we want to. So if we want to add a widget, we can do so. So we can just. Um, so we can just bring up the menu and we can add an item and we can add a widget, for example. Uh, and we could say, let's add the um, calendar. And I obviously don't have any upcoming events, but that does actually load the calendar onto the screen and I can tap it and it brings it up in full screen and I can pop back out of there. And then I could go to another panel and then I could add another widget and uh, I could add, for example, let's add music. And then it actually adds in our music player, so uh, if anything was playing, it would be listed here, what the actual track was playing. I can stop and uh, start the playback, and I can actually change uh, the next track and so on all through there. So there's a number of widgets that you can actually add to each of the screens, and different screens could do a different things. So for example, I could have here media playback, um, things like photos and everything also on one panel. I could have my more serious applications such as email and so on on another panel and a third panel could be games and other bits and pieces so it's all fully customizable. So we're going to be doing a full review of the Motorola Milestone over the next week or so. I mean so far I've been playing around with it um, over the last 24 hours. I have to say I am very impressed with it. Things that I've already mentioned in the previous video is just how solid the sliding mechanism is. Um, it just feels really, really well made. The keyboard feels really good. Uh, that feels like that's going to last some time. There's no slack in that at all. Uh, it doesn't want to like slide diagonally, it just wants to slide shut 
and snaps into place. It's very, very good and very impressive. Audio is perfectly okay, and the touchscreen is extremely sensitive and extremely clear, as you can see there. That's a really nice looking uh, display, even with the reflection that we obviously got in this room with lighting, um, you can still see the display really, really well. So, like I say, I have a full review for you over the next week or so. The review will be on tracyamat.co.uk as soon as we have it. Uh, and if you're a fan of the unboxing videos, check out the others on unboxings.com. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter. On Twitter, we are Tracy and Matt, and on Facebook, we have a fan page, tracyandmatt.co.uk. Please check us out on there because we are running a few really big competitions at the moment. Definitely worth uh, having having a look. Uh, we're giving away HTC Hero, Xbox 360, uh, HTC Tattoo and a load of other prizes. So definitely worth having a look. If you've missed any of those details, just look at the intro screen of this video which has all the URLs that you need. And don't forget to come back to tracymat.co.uk to have a look at our most rather milestone review.